All right, Peter King now has come out, said, hey, I like the Lions. Put an article out recently here about how the Lions have the horses to be like Rich Strike. And Craig and rich I are like, strike. what the heck is a Rich Strike? <laughs> I this did is think that. Yeah, oh, Rich Strike. This is referring to the Kentucky Derby. Rich Strike, he was in 16th place with 33 seconds left in the race. Okay. Basically, Craig, Dan Campbell loved this analogy or loved this performance. Underdog that comes through wins. We are the classic underdog. We've been that yes. forever. Um, and I think last year was a good example where people were finally like, okay, yeah, I, I want you guys to win. Like, I don't care if you're a Vikings fan, a Cowboys fan. It's like, boy, I know every fan base goes through some tough stuff, but it feels like the Lions go through heartbreaks and just bad yeah. breaks so peter king is really high on us loves what we're doing loves brad holmes loves dan campbell so craig we have the horses and it's just a play on words and the whole thing but the point was we have the horses to kind of go from this underdog to a legit team that's like hey we thought this was a rebuild but peter king in his talks with brad holmes and dan campbell is like i love these guys love what they're doing and there's no reason why they can't be 500 looking at the playoffs this year. So your thoughts on that when you hear that from Peter King? Yeah, I think that's interesting when I hear that um, because first off, Peter King always doing, you know, very eloquent writing, yes. but like we can't just write normal. <laughs> we got to talk rich strike. And I guess most people will see the Kentucky Derby. They know what's going on. Uh, it's always good when you have the national media that starts buying in. I think usually when you have the majority of national media people buying in, that means that something's probably happening that's good uh, with your team. Not, I'm not saying the national media is always right. It just feels like this year there's a much larger part of the national media that's saying, hey, the Lions have something going here. And I'm trying to decide. Is it because we really have something going or do you think we were like the Chicago Cubs of the 90s? Like where were those level lovable losers, like the cardiac cats, as we like to call them with the Lions? Like, do you think that's part of it? The whole like, hey, we got the logo. We've got, you know, we've got the I don't know. It's the logo. It's the Honolulu blue, just like the Cubbies. They have good looking jerseys. Do you think that's part of it? Like people just want us to win because we haven't in so long and we look yeah. decent. I think it's I think it's definitely part of it. I think every year we're that worst to first team that you kind of people pick because it's like we're always worst. And so it's like you can't <laughs> pick. Hey, I, you know, you can't sell stuff by being like, hey, I think uh, I think the Rams are going to be good this year. It's like for no sure. Crap, right. So you got to pick somebody that's low. But I think I do think there is real meat behind it this time. But to answer your question, I think that's why a lot of us are still nervous about it is because this happens a lot. I remember in the Patricia era, wait, oh, year two of Patricia, like they really got the system down. This guy is no, no. So is it real or is it not? And that's the big question that we come back to. Is this real or is it like it just feels good to say the Lions because we all want them to win? I, or do we have something real here? What do you think on that? Yeah, I think the question comes down to is who are our horses like? And I think with when he says that we have the horses, I think we have a few somewhat proven horses, but we have a lot of young horses that have yet to prove themselves, but they've they've proven to run fast times. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to stick with this analogy. I should just ditch it all together. Here's my <laughs> question for you. Who do yeah. you think are some of those players that are going to be the horses? Who's going to be like? And you can name a few. I can name a few. But like, who are those five to ten guys that you feel like, hey, we can rely on and that will have to come through as big time players in order to get to that nine and eight, ten and seven season this year? Yep, I'll give you three and they're all in the same position group, but it's uh, Hutchinson, Levi and Aleem McNeil are high draft picks, horses on the D line, right, that we could just yep. really um look to to get pressure you know, we've talked about it a million times but it's like yo those are the guys right need you mm -hmm. need you we got other guys but have we ever i just would love to get pressure i would love to have these um young defensive linemen that we've taken high really do well and but to your point exactly boy they're still young i i i want to say they're horses they're supposed to be they're supposed to be our guys but yeah. man we've seen it a million times draft picks 
just because you were a second round pick that I mean that does literally means nothing and you got to come out and make it happen and that's why this is a make or break year for so I wouldn't say make or break but it's make or break in the terms of are you the guy to really be a part of our team and be the reason we get better or are you just Ah, shoot, a guy. you're a depth piece. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which isn't the worst thing. Some of them will end up being a guy and some of them will end up being the guy. Like that's just the way it goes. I would go on the offensive side of the ball. I think you have two horses that are already proven with Decker and rag now. And then you add Sewell who's as close to proven mm. as a rookie and second year player can be. So I think you have that. And then um, it's just so when you have horses on the lines, on the offense and defensive line. I think that's why a lot of people start to like this team. I think, I think you see how important a good offensive or defensive front is. Find me a team that's won the super bowl in the last 20 years. There might be one. I don't know. I haven't done the research that doesn't have either a very good offense or a very good defensive line, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even the chiefs had a good defensive line the year that they won it. So, and then they had a horrible offensive line the next year. And, you know, I mean, like, and then they went out and they got offensive linemen. People, whether they admit it or not, realize that a lot of games are won in the trenches still. As, yeah, as beautiful as this league has become and pass happy, it's still won in the trenches. And I'll even go one step further. I'm listening to a podcast called Luck right now on The Athletic. And when you see a team like the Colts, they had the best quarterback, arguably could have been one of the best, if not the best in the league. They didn't protect him. And so like the team could win, but they could only go so far because he kept getting hurt and they couldn't win the big game. So I think we have the horses in the right places. I question your horses more than the offensive line. I think the offensive line is more proven than the defensive line. Absolutely. You, you named off some of our go-to, if you had to like power rank it. Yeah. Absolutely. I love those guys. I love the like leadership. They've been around a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. We have, we have uh, a ton of horses that are like, I, I don't know this. is That's what makes it so fun. And I keep kind of going back to like hard knocks or training, training camp, hard knocks, and then into the season, we could either have something really special here that it's like, okay, this is going to be a sustained thing that we're doing or, yeah. um, you know, maybe not. And it's not like the worst thing in the world because it is a lot to expect Levi and Aleem to really come through and Hutch to really be good as rookie year. But yeah. um, it's like, but that's kind of what we're doing here. And there's other guys too, of course. There's actually, and I and I would love to know this, Craig, and I don't we don't follow other teams as in depth, but it doesn't it seem like we have almost <laughs> I mean, aside from the guys you named, it feels like we have almost every player that's in this like prove it. I don't know. You had some things, you should be good situation more than any team in the league. And so that's why it's like, yeah. let's go. And that's where it's just like, I don't know. And and so the question is, were the decisions, were the people we brought in, how good are they? Like, even when you look at the back end, like Tracy Walker, you're like, all right, we brought him back. We gave him a lot of money, but he still has to prove that he can be a playmaker, like right. that he can create turnovers and things like that. And I understand every player, no matter where you go around the league, is going to have to prove something, Absolutely. right? Or they're going to have to improve their game in some way. But you're not kidding. Like, it seems like every player, DJ Chark has to prove that he's he can return to his old form, you know, and, and that he can be healthy. Uh, Jamison Williams has to prove that he can be healthy. Amon Ross St. Brown has to prove that it wasn't a fluke. Our linebacker <laughs> unit just has to prove that they can play football in general. You know, know, so like there's a lot of prove it out here, but also a lot of optimism because the things that we've done, have I mean Brad Holmes? We Brad Holmes, the players he's brought in so far, they have a pretty good track record of proving it once they get here. So I think a lot of it is well, we trust what he's doing and he'll keep doing it. I yes. think that's why you say the horses are there, and then you have the players that, even though it's small sample size, they've proven that they can be effective in the right situation. Um, even guys like Swift, like he has proven when he gets the ball and he gets the touches and he's healthy he's going to be an effective running back in multiple ways. Um, you know, it's just, it's just the way it goes. So oh, it, it's, it's endless. So you, let us know in the comments, who are some players that's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do we Maybe. have the horses. Yeah. We let us know, it. but we're getting some, you didn't think we'd be talking horses and rich strike. And that doesn't even make sense. That's why I don't Kentucky like that. Derby. That's not a name. That's like a sentence. Like, I don't know. It just, bothers me Craig. It's a statement rich it's a rich anyway 
Horse names know. never make sense. No, that, I think that's the larger point. If you're going to name your horse and you name him Charlie, that's stupid. They're, they're going to get dumb. laughed. But if you name him Thumbs Up, it's like, oh. You name him Thumbs Up. <laughs> oh, Thumbs Up one. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. We better, we better get out of here. We don't know what we're talking about when it comes to horses. And we yep. will see all of you on the next one. See you.